Hey everyone, welcome to the Be Me Life. For this video, I'd like to give some advice, but also share my experience going through my biomedical engineering degree. Just for some background, I just graduated. I think this would be very useful for people that are considering to go into this degree. Um, or you're already in the BME degree and you don't really know what to expect. Here's some advice and word of experience so that maybe it can help you. Just a little disclaimer, this is my advice and my experience doesn't mean it's gonna work perfectly for you, but it worked perfectly for me. I guess the first point I wanna cover is that I was a transfer student, so it took me five years to finish my degree. However, it is a four year degree. A lot of people have asked me how long this degree is. It is four years, but it took me five years because I transferred and during my first two years of college, I was undecided on what major to follow. So that's why it kind of pushed me back one year. So going back into being a transfer student, I came from a university in Brownsville, Texas. If you guys don't know, that's the super small town or city. I transferred from that university, which was still a UT school, to another UT school in San Antonio, UTSA. San Antonio is a bigger city, bigger school. It was definitely a big change for me. My first semester at UTSA was the hardest semester I had ever experienced in my life. I think it was even harder than my senior design semesters. More than the classes themselves, it was just the transition. You know, you come here on your own, you don't know anyone, and you don't know what to expect. But all you see are all these super smart people around you. And you start realizing that you're not as smart as you thought you were. You start to really struggle in your classes. You start to fail the quizzes, fail the tests, fail the homeworks. No matter how much you try, no matter how long you stay up at night, you fail. And it's a little discouraging but trust me that's part of i don't know about other majors but i know for sure engineering i've heard a lot of people that struggle during their first semester this is the turning or breaking point for everyone in engineering you will decide if this is worth the pain for me personally even though i was definitely struggling i was taking calculus 2 physics statistics physiology and anatomy those weren't the hardest class i ever took but they were definitely hard in the bigger school they just feel so much harder i was doing pretty bad in most of them um, i ended up getting c's and some b's but i just want to say that you're gonna look around and you're gonna feel dumb <laughs> just know that you're not the only one and you're not dumb you're just trying to catch up in this new lifestyle in this new school in this new environment these new professors, everything is so new. It doesn't compare to your math classes in high school. It's nothing like it. It's just about getting used to it. One thing that helped me a lot was having friends or making friends that were in my same career or degree. Friends that you can go to if you have questions, you can support each other. It helps a lot to know that you're not going through it alone. Making a little parentheses in this video, a lot of people ask us on Instagram. A lot of these are high school students and they're like, I'm in high school, I'm interested in BME, what courses can I take? I went to a really small high school, so AP classes weren't really a thing. I would definitely recommend getting any of the calculus out of the way if you can. I took up to college algebra in high school and I started college with pre-calculus and then I went up the calculus ladder. And that was fine for me. You know, don't overkill yourself, but if you can take any of your calculus classes in high school, I would definitely do it because honestly, high school professors are much better than university professors or just the way they teach you know you're in class like every single day and you have homework and practice a lot so i would definitely recommend taking calculus in high school if you can because you'll probably just understand the material much better also chemistry physics biology if you can take any ap courses on those i would 
recommend that. All the BME degrees throughout the US are different in their requirements, but I would assume that all engineering degrees require chemistry, physics, and calculus. Next thing about getting into a biomedical engineering degree is that, I mean, at least me, but I think a lot of people are very confused in the beginning and they don't really know what BME even is. That was definitely true for me. I got into biomedical engineering because I was good at math and science. It just sounded cool, but I really had no idea what to expect. And I really don't think I understood the full concept of BME until probably my last year. I still went along with my continuing on my career. I got to learn more and more and more about BME. And the reason why you might be confused about what BME is, is because it's so vast. BME covers so many different fields and you can do so many different things with it. If you haven't heard by now, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it in my channel that BME is the jack of all traits. All you learn is very surface level. Don't expect to know too much about any subject because you might not. Don't be disappointed by that, that's totally fine and it'll be up to you to decide if you want to specialize in a specific field of biomedical engineering. For example, some fields that you can go into, medical devices, biomechanics, biomaterials, pharmaceuticals, cell and tissue engineering, biocomputation, imaging, and those are just the ones that I can think of right now, but there are so, so many. There's very different fields. You're gonna realize that along the way, and it's okay to not know what you wanna do right away. That leads into my third point, which is just get experience. Any experience that you can is good, but I think one of the first steps that you should take during your biomedical engineering degree is joining a research lab. And I personally learned about a research lab, I think during my first or second semester in BME. I would hear my classmates talking about being part of a lab and I was just so confused. Like I didn't know what it meant to join a research lab. I started asking questions and I started to learn more about it from my peers. I decided that I wanted to give it a try. Research really is for people that want to go into graduate school. Like I think research is like a training for graduate school because that's really what you do in graduate school it's just mostly research and at least in the science fields i actually really liked it i enjoyed being in the research lab when i first started it was mostly like image analysis i would analyze images using this software and the images that i would analyze were from electron microscopes so i would look at the difference between two types of cells and try to quantify their differences it was really interesting and i got some really cool results that i was able to present in the bmes conference which is the biomedical engineering society annual meeting and and so that was really cool. And if you're thinking about research, you know, that's kind of like the research world. Being in the lab, looking at your results, putting it together in an abstract or a paper, presenting it at conferences, at symposiums, just an FYI. Usually universities will give you the project that they want you to work on. Research can either be voluntary or you can get paid for it. Sometimes research positions are actually like actual positions that you can find on your school's website or sometimes you have to create that position for yourself and that's mostly what it is i think usually you have to go up to the professors and be like i saw that in your lab you guys do these things and i'm really interested in learning more about it i also have an interest in pursuing graduate school so that's what i did i joined a research lab but Another thing you can do is join like school organizations. And if you do join an organization, I would say that you have to do at least one of two things. Either you should volunteer because that looks really good on your resume. Attending like summer camps and teaching high school, middle school kids about engineering or STEM, that looks good on your resume. But the other thing that I think looks even better, holding a leadership position during your time at the organization. I personally never really joined an organization, but I would recommend it for 
anyone. If you find an organization that fits you, two organizations that I can think of that are national and you should check out if you haven't heard from them. It's SUI, the Society of Women for Engineers. They have a national like membership and they have conferences. Once you're a professional, you still can be a part of it. And then there's BMES, which I already mentioned, which is the Biomedical Engineering Society. So just getting involved in like school organizations gives you exposure to volunteer and leadership opportunities, but also just exposure to maybe luncheons or having guest speakers. You know, sometimes they will have guest speakers from industry or graduate schools and you get to hear from them and what they do and then you can see if you like that other than school organizations also be open to going to events just so you can hear from professionals about all the different things that you can do with your degree it's easier to get inspired when you hear someone talking about what they do and realizing that you could do that yourself and the last and i think probably best kind of experience that you can get during your undergrad is an internship if you're thinking of graduate school and you're sure that you want to go do your PhD right after your bachelor's then you don't have to worry about internships with industry but if you're thinking of going into industry or you're considering it you should definitely get an internship I'm not gonna lie it can be pretty hard to find them this is why you should do what I mentioned before joining a research lab or going to events or joining clubs because in these places is where you get to network and find about all these opportunities or hear from your contacts who is looking to hire for an intern. That is actually how I personally found my internship. After being in the lab with my principal investigator for a year, I found about this internship opportunity. So my principal investigator wrote a letter of recommendation for me and I applied and I got the job. But I must say that I also applied to probably two other internships where I also had letter of recommendations that I didn't get into. Rejection is something that you're going to have to face you're gonna have to learn how to deal with it and then move on it's just about knocking on doors and seeing which one opens the last point that I want to go over is getting skills now this is a question that a lot of people also ask me and it's like what kind of skills should I get during my BME degree honestly I don't even know if I should say this but you can technically go through BME skill -less. I'm skillless almost, but it really depends on what you want to do. But if I could list the most popular skills that I've seen when I'm applying to jobs. Well, first of all, I think the number one skill is networking. You have to learn how to network, how to market yourself, how to present yourself to potential opportunities, learn to communicate and just make a good first impression. But to even get to that point, you first need to network to be able to find those opportunities. It's a skill that is always going to be useful no matter what industry you're in. Now to more technical skills, I would say that the most popular one is SOLIDWORKS or any other sort of 3D modeling. SOLIDWORKS is definitely very popular and you'll definitely use it in your classes. It really depends on what you want to do. For example, in, in my senior design classes, we had one person that did the SOLIDWORKS drawings. So we really didn't need to do it because we had someone who did it. And when you're hired into a company, they're probably gonna have a SOLIDWORKS person. But if you want to be the SOLIDWORKS person, then you will learn SOLIDWORKS. Then you learn SOLIDWORKS, then you can apply to those positions that list in the preferred qualifications. If you're interested in that, then get into it. Another skill that's good to have is coding and programming. I know very surface level coding. I've used MATLAB, R, and the Arduino <laughs> software throughout my years in engineering. If you're interested in coding and or robotic programming kind of goes along with robotics, you have to learn how to code. It, it is a good skill, but again, it is not necessary. And it really depends on the kind of work that you want to do. If you're in a research lab, coding can be useful to analyze your data. Coding can definitely be better than Excel. It can help you a lot more. But is it necessary? Probably not. Is it good to have it? Definitely. 
And the last skill that I would recommend is to learn regulatory language. That is a field that I think a lot of schools are lacking on teaching. Knowing about the FDA, the regulatory pathways, the kinds of devices, the classes, the different kinds of FDA clearance submissions that you can do. This is something that I definitely didn't really learn much about until I started my internship. Um, but I think it'd be really good to learn it before. If you're also thinking of maybe starting your own company or choosing to go the entrepreneurial side of biomedical engineering, this is amazing skill that you should learn right now because you need to learn what it takes to put a medical device in the market. FDA gov has amazing sources for information on our, all their regulatory. I'll definitely leave the link down below. So this is all my advice for you if you're interested in pursuing biomedical engineering or if you're already in the program and you just want to hear some advice from a word of experience. There it is. So the path that I took was, you know, start BME, get into a research lab, get into an industry internship and then I was actually offered a job so I think it's a pretty good path to follow. Let me know if you have any other advice that I should think about. Also if you have any specific questions about the advice that I gave. If I can leave with one last advice is to not be afraid to apply, you know, just apply to everything and again you're gonna get rejected to most of it but hey, everyone does. Like, don't feel bad for it. We all go through it. And it's just part of the learning process and learning how to develop yourself as a biomedical engineer and just adding value to your career and what you can provide. So we've reached the end of this video. Um, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, join our Facebook group. And we just started a partnership with TikTok. So you should check that out. Support is there too. But as always, thank you all so much for watching. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask your questions. And we'll see you next time.